and I was gonna show you how to do this in all in all in one part so uh, I think it's gonna be a little too long so stay tuned for part two we're going to color correct we're going to blend the TV more and by the time we get done I promise you you're not going to be able to tell that that's not originally on the TV so this is a ba basic quick how to match move something to your footage and we're going to elaborate more on this on the next movie so stay tuned for part two that's next hey guys it's Eric back for part two and we're going to fine-tune our composite so now let's get into um, color correcting and stuff as you can see I've got another stabilized node and the only thing I've done was selected the first stabilized node and just duplicated it I just copied and pasted it that's all I've done so I have the exact same settings and parameters on two stabilized nodes now so now I'm going to load my TV footage into the canvas here like that right there and I'm going to go to my color tab and add and adjust HSV now what this is going to do is going to allow me to color match so I'm going to load my parameter to my adjust HSV into my parameters box over here my source color I'm going to click I'm going to make it the wall back here now my destination color I'm going to click it and click on something white in the scene like say this here maybe not quite wide enough let's find something a little wider maybe this book here and that lightens it up just a tad you can play it play around till you get the color that you're looking for um, it's really up to you but I like to kind of match it to something in my scene like that right there now that looks pretty good so now we have our hue saturation uh, values selected let me go back to my node view now what we're gonna do is I'm going to adjust me a little bit more so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and add a few nodes to to me I'm gonna go in and add a brightness node so I'm going to color brightness bring the brightness up a little bit on the TV there it's just working on me as you can see then I'm gonna add a blur node just to blur it down here I'm gonna open it up so I can see my sliders I'm gonna blur it a tad just to you know kinda clear up the edges and make it look not as rough okay now that we have it blurred I'm gonna add one more node film grain Now, what film grain is going to do is it's going to make it look a little bit more blended in I'm going to select it hit the E to extract it bring my other nodes down and I'm going to put it in between the blur like that right there now we have some film grain and and some colors adjusted there now I'm going to make a roto shape that's what I'm going to use this stabilize for. So I'm going to go to my image tab. I'm going to make a roto shape. I'm going to load my screen in into the viewer and load my roto shape parameters by clicking the right side of it. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a shape around my TV. And this is just going to clean up my edges a little bit. Okay, after I got that. I'm going to go to I let's see what do I want to do go to your filter tab let's add a dilate erode this will help with our corners and then I'm going to add a blur and up my blur a little bit like that right there to kind of soften my edges now what I want to do is I want to take my stabilize node and I'm going to bring my blur node down into it and that connects my roto shape to my stabilize node now I need to connect all three of these together so I'm going to disconnect my key mix node and I'm going to add go to my layers tab and I'm going to add a key mix instead of a mix I'm going to add a key mix so let me add, click the key mix node I'm going to bring it down bring my picture into my middle which is my foreground and bring my roto shape into the third one like that now I need to go back in here and adjust my brightness a little bit I'm gonna click on the right side 
bring it down so it won't be quite so ah, jumping off at you on the screen now I'm going to select my last node go to my other add a D interlace and as you can see that gets rid of the jaggies and now when I scroll through we have our picture tracked the color is adjusted and I tell you what I could go in here and adjust the brightness a little bit more and also um, you could throw on a gamma node if you wanted to it's really up to you on how you want to do this and, and how you want to adjust things so if you add a gamma node in there you can brighten it up like that a little bit so it looks a little bit more convincing they don't brighten it up like brightness would so there we go guys that looks pretty convincing for just a few minutes worth of work and this is why shake is so wonderful um, here's the before look at that wow isn't that horrible let me go back to our original one here, our final one. And there we go. And um, as far as these little crosses go, I have my picture laid over top of it. But sometimes um, that don't work. I had it once before, a node tree where the picture the, was transparent enough to where you could see the crosses and you have to go in and paint them out with quick paint. And I just don't have enough time to show you how that's done. So that will be another movie. So here is my finished node tree, as you can see. Um, it's not that complicated. Once you get your head wrapped around Shake, you'll understand why the nodal-based system is so much more powerful than the layer-based system. People claim that AE is as powerful as Shake, and it can be as powerful as Shake and do what Shake does, and it does have particles and stuff. It's made more for motion graphics and commercials. When it comes to purely compositing, there's not an application on the planet, I think, that rivals Shake, besides maybe Nuke. And um, I'm just hoping that the replacement that Apple is coming will, won't be too far off, and they'll give us Shake owners a discount. <laughs> but until next time, I hope you've learned something. As you can see, we have our footage tracked here. I could render a flipbook out and let you see it, but I think you get the idea. So I hope you've learned something, and if you have any questions, get a hold of me at www.finalcutstudioschool.com, and um, we'll see you next time.